Before you start to change a chlorine gas cylinder, inform the relevant fire service who will then be able to respond appropriately to a potential alarm. Before entering a chlorine gas room, always consider your own health and safety. Chlorine is a poisonous gas. Chlorine forms hydrochloric acid upon contact with atmospheric humidity or mucous membranes. Hydrochloric acid can lead to severe chemical burns or even death. Warning instructions located outside the chlorine gas room state that changing cylinders and handling the equipment are dangerous and may only be undertaken by suitably qualified and experienced personnel. Always wear a respirator mask when changing a chlorine gas cylinder. It may save your life in an emergency. The respirator mask is part of your personal protective equipment. In other words, it is marked with your name and must be stored outside the chlorine gas room. First of all, check the filter in the mask and ensure that the filter is still fit for use. If the filter has been in use or storage for more than six months, it must not be used under any circumstances. Replace it with a new one. Remove the new filter from the sealed package and label it clearly and permanently with the current date on which it was opened. Screw the filter onto the mask and put the mask on. Check whether the mask is airtight by breathing in and holding the filter opening shut. Tighten the temple straps evenly on each side. Check again that the mask is airtight by breathing in and holding the filter opening shut. Then breathe out sharply to check that the exhalation valve is functioning correctly. Always wear your personal long-sleeved overalls as well as protective gloves, ideally made of natural rubber, and your safety shoes. In the chlorine gas room, previously changed, empty chlorine gas cylinders, and those which are still full are marked accordingly. First of all, determine which of the connected cylinders are to be changed. To do so, check the manometer readings on the cylinder valves and the upstream vacuum safety valves. On a cylinder which is to be replaced, first close the main cylinder valve. The manometer should now indicate zero. Loosen the lock nut on the armature by about half a turn and carry out an ammonia test in close proximity to check for leaks. Hold the ammonia bottle upright and ensure that the ammonia does not come into direct contact with the valve or other components or pipework. This could lead to corrosion and deterioration of the parts. Under no circumstances should you remove the lock nut entirely, as this could prevent it from being tightened quickly and easily in the event of a leak. If there is no chlorine gas escaping, that is, if the ammonia test does not produce a cloud, completely remove the armature from the cylinder and put it in a suitable safe place. For example, a specifically designed wall fitting. Once the armature has been removed, do another ammonia test to ensure that the cylinder is completely airtight. Screw on the valve lock nut and tighten it with a suitable tool. Carry out another ammonia test to check for leaks. Clean the cylinder thread with a wire brush. Screw the valve protection cap onto the cylinder to protect the cylinder valve during transportation. The valve protection cap must always be screwed on tightly. Release the cylinder safety mechanism, then roll the empty cylinder on its base to the intended storage area. Remember that even empty cylinders always contain a small amount of chlorine. Handle them with as much care as you would a full cylinder. Caution! Even seemingly empty cylinders are pressurized and may be hazardous.
Carefully align and secure the cylinder. Mark the empty cylinder, for example, using a labeled sleeve or a suitable sign. Release the safety mechanism on the full cylinder, then roll it on its base to its intended position. Align the cylinder and secure the cylinder safety mechanism. Remove the valve protection cap and check by hand whether the main cylinder valve is closed. Now open the valve lock nut by about half a turn and carry out an ammonia test. Make sure that the ammonia does not come into direct contact with the valve or other components or pipework. If the ammonia test does not produce a cloud, unscrew the valve lock nut completely. Remove the old seal carefully. Clean away any residue from the sealing points. Put a new seal in position and grease both sides with silicon grease. Now, connect the cylinder to the system. Tighten the lock nut with a suitable tool. Open the chlorine gas cylinder valve and close it immediately once the pressure has built. Carry out an ammonia test and check whether the pressure on the manometer drops. If there is no chlorine gas escaping, that if the ammonia test does not produce a cloud and the pressure has not dropped, completely open the chlorine gas cylinder valve. Tighten it back up by half a turn and check again with ammonia. Then, label the new cylinder indicating the date on which it was connected. When all the work on the chlorine gas equipment is complete, inform the fire service that the work is finished. In the event of a chlorine gas alarm, a signal horn sounds in the danger zone and the alarm lamp comes on. In the event of a chlorine gas alarm, a distinction is made between a chlorine leak and a chlorine spill. If the chlorine gas alarm indicates a chlorine leak, the chlorine has a concentration of up to 2.5 ppm. A chlorine spill occurs when the concentration of chlorine is greater than 2.5 ppm, up to 5 ppm, or a maximum of 20 ppm. In the case of a chlorine spill, the fire service must be informed immediately of the details of the danger zone, the time, and the number of bathers so that the appropriate action can be taken. In the event of such a chlorine spill, only specialists and emergency personnel may enter the areas affected by the chlorine. In the event of a chlorine leak, that is a chlorine concentration of up to 2.5 ppm, suitably trained personnel may remove a faulty chlorine gas cylinder. Before removing a faulty chlorine gas cylinder from the chlorine facility, put on your personal protective equipment. Identify the leaky chlorine gas cylinder armature using an ammonia test. 
Place the designated sealing ring on the neck of the leaky cylinder. Screw the red emergency valve protection cap onto the cylinder thread. Tighten the red emergency valve protection cap with a suitable tool and carry out another ammonia test. Leave the chlorine gas room and open the hand valve for the sprinkler system. Whenever you have cause to work on the chlorine gas equipment, always remember the following for your own safety. Chlorine is a poisonous gas which can be lethal when inhaled. Only suitably trained and experienced personnel wearing appropriate protective clothing are permitted to enter the chlorine gas room. To prepare for the worst case scenario, read the first aid notice regarding chlorine gas poisoning accidents. This notice can be found on all outer doors of a chlorine gas room. For your own safety, you must always put on a respirator mask, long-sleeved overalls and gloves in a designated area before changing a chlorine gas cylinder. To ensure that no chlorine enters the drainage system, the water drain in the chlorine gas room must be refilled to the brim with water on a regular basis and before a chlorine gas cylinder is changed. Safety features of a chlorine gas room. The safety marking on the outer door. The water drain filled to the brim with water. The heating system in the chlorine gas room. Check for functionality in order to guarantee a minimum temperature during operation in winter. The chlorine gas sensor with a signal line to an external chlorine gas warning device. The sprinkler system for washing away any released chlorine gas. Tools and aids which should be kept close at hand. Marker pen for permanently labeling the filter on a respirator mask. Sufficient ammonia for the ammonia test. Chalk marker for labeling the newly connected chlorine gas cylinder. Hammer. Suitable spanners. Seals for valve lock nuts. Silicon grease. Sealing rings for the valve protection caps. Red emergency valve protection cap.